So first off, ISO stands for International Standards Organization. And honestly, who cares? Let's just talk about how it affects your video. Hey everyone, Camber here back with you and today we're talking about ISO and how it affects your video. And if you're new here, this channel is all about teaching you how to use your camera to make good videos. So if that's you, consider subscribing. So ISO is simply a camera setting that allows you to brighten or darken your shots. And as you get higher ISO numbers, it progressively brightens your images. And so ISO is a great tool to use, especially in dark environments, and it allows you to be more flexible in shaping your shots through your choice in aperture and shutter speed. Remembering that a stop of light is a doubling or halving of the amount of light let in when taking a photo or video, you can know exactly how any change in your ISO will affect your exposure, because any doubling of your ISO number will result in a brighter image by one stop, while any halving of your ISO number will result in a darker image by one stop. Looking at this picture, we can see that it's underexposed by two stops of light based on the metering scale. So if we double the ISO from 200 to 400, it will increase by one stop of light. So now our picture is only underexposed by one stop of light. So if we double the ISO again to 800, that increases by one more stop of light and now our image is properly exposed. However, raising ISO also has consequences. If you're using too high of an ISO, you'll start to get a lot of grain, also known as noise, in your images, and it may end up being unusable. So looking back to that previous example, let's say that when we are two stops underexposed, we were already at 1600 ISO. So then we have to double it again to 3200 in order to get to one stop underexposed, and then double it one more time to 6400, and now our image is properly exposed, but you can see there's a lot more noise in it and the image is deteriorating very rapidly at the higher ISO. So there's always a trade-off with ISO and you should really only raise it when absolutely necessary when you can't change your exposure with shutter speed or aperture, like with video, how we're stuck with using a single shutter speed for our videos to make your motion blur look the most natural. Now, I brought up the International Standards Organization at the beginning because they developed an industry standard scale for measuring sensitivity to light. And this was normally used in relation to camera film and how sensitive it was to light. Because when you would buy film, you would buy a certain film speed, or ISO, and at the lower numbers, it would be less sensitive to light, and as you got up to the higher film speeds, or ISO, it would be more sensitive to light. And nowadays, with digital cameras, it's commonly said that ISO is your camera sensor's sensitivity to light. However, it's not quite true because your camera sensor only has one light sensitivity level. Instead, with digital cameras, there's a whole different process that goes on for boosting exposure based on ISO. So even though your camera sensor's sensitivity level isn't actually changing, it still can be helpful to think of ISO as acting like your camera sensor sensitivity. So a lower ISO not only produces less noise, but it also gives you better colors and dynamic range, which is your camera's ability to capture highlights and darks. And so it's recommended that you use the lowest ISO possible in order to get the best quality out of your camera. And you can do this by using lights to light your scenes properly and opening your aperture as necessary to let more light into your camera. However, you won't always be able to keep the ISO at the lowest setting when you run into low light situations or times where you may want to have a more narrow aperture to have a deeper depth of field. And so you have to raise your ISO in order to compensate for your exposure. And certain cameras like the Sony A7S Mark II do really well in low light, and I've been able to use that camera at 12,800 ISO in a wedding before and still been able to use the footage. However, I wouldn't suggest that with most cameras, especially if they don't have a full-frame camera sensor. So just take your camera, test it out at different ISO levels, and see what's your personal limit for usable footage, and try not to go above that. And that's all I have for ISO, so if this was helpful, hit that like button and let me know down below if you have any more questions about ISO. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't, and remember that the only way to get better at something is to practice. So get out there and film something. See you soon.